I knew who'd smashed it, but I wouldn't tell them. They just go and grab people and try and pull them out, even people that weren't doing no wrong. I was I arrested four times. I didn't know how I was going to manage. You knew sometime or other you wouldn't have to, like, call it a day. You know, and uh, as a leader, he should have said, we've lost track, lads. I'm taking you back to work. We'd fought for a year, gone without so many things, and his heart was really in wanting to win this battle and keep the pits open. And now we'd, we'd lost. I did pay a heavy cost for what I did. I left the pit, lost my wife, my kids, had to move, and lost a lot of friends. Those that came out on strike, I've got a lot of respect for. And I respect them for following their beliefs. I just want them to give me the same respect. I followed my beliefs. Because it was a wonderful pit, great pit, and great people who were there, you know what I mean? Real, real good colliers, you know, really good mining men. And to lose all of that, you think, God, did you call these on scrappy? All these men, do you know what I mean? I was 16 when I started, and 23 when Sharbrook shot. My mental health went down a little bit because when pitch it, it, it left a void. And that's not been filled as yet. Something missing. Mm -hmm. But such wonderful memories, honestly. Even though it would be dirty job in world. I don't want the memories to leave me, I want them for the rest of my life. You don't want to move on then? No, I don't want to move on, no. We were 40 years on. But from what we had to what we've got, I love Chybrook. I love being in a little village full of miners and miners' wives and miners' families. Not anymore. The working man don't want vast amount of money. Working man's not idle. All he wants to do is, he wants to go to work, have enough money to go out and have a drink, wife to be all right, kids all right, go away for a couple of weeks in summer. That's all he wanted. And the government, all them at top, don't want to give it to him. I was Assistant Chief Constable Operations for the Derbyshire Constabulary. And Derbyshire Police had worked very, very hard on establishing a form of community policing. Bigger police forces always tended to be uh, more in your face. They just go and grab people and try and pull them out, even people that weren't doing no wrong. Well, I was arrested four times. Never charged with anything. And had you done anything wrong? I just attended, just, just by being there, I was deemed to be a threat. I've got kids to sorted out, got them in bed. And then I got a knock on my door to say that he'd been arrested. I knew who'd smashed it, but I wouldn't tell them. So they say, if you don't tell them who it is, well, they're only two on us here, but he said, if you don't tell them who it is, then we're going to arrest you both. So that's what happened. And uh, they charged us both and sentenced us to a uh, prison sentence. Three months. I were heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken. I didn't know how I was going to manage with two children on my own for, for three months. And then when I told, got told he'd been took to a maximum security prison, we're murderers. I was scared for him as well. But they wanted everybody out of way. I was prepared to stand on that picket line and stand up for themselves. They wanted everybody out of way, they want, no matter where it was. They wanted to shut of them. <laughs> 